We saw from the scriptures that the Bible says, and you shall call him Jesus, for he shall save you from your sin. He shall save you from your sin. And I said this, no matter what sin you are in, all it takes is that name of Jesus. Amen. I said today I don't drink. Not because I am a very determined person, but because there is a name, the name Jesus, that delivered me from that drink. Today I don't smoke. And those who have been smokers know how addictive smoking can be. I had resolutions at the beginning of the year. I would renew resolutions at Easter. I would renew resolutions for not smoking in December. And I would find myself back to smoking. But Jesus delivered me from that weakness. What has he feel? He delivered me. Most of you think that it is your willpower. But your willpower without Jesus, you can find yourself back into that place. Hallelujah. Say Jesus. Jesus. This is a name that you need to understand. Because the church is founded on Christ. The church is founded on the name Jesus. Hallelujah. He is the one that came and died for us. And the Bible says that there is no name that is given under heaven that people can be saved. You can't be saved by another name. You can't. You cannot be saved. And when you're talking about salvation, we are talking salvation of the spirit, salvation of the soul, salvation of the body, everything, a wholesome salvation. That is the name that is given. There is no other name that is given. This name caused disciples to be beaten. They would be taken to places and be beaten and they would be told, you can preach this thing, you can preach anything, but don't use this name. Don't use this name. People are comfortable when you say, my God. People are comfortable when you say any other word. But the moment you say, Jesus, atmosphere changes. Atmosphere changes. I wish you can be able to understand. And as I said, this name was given to him. It doesn't make the God that gave Jesus that name less powerful. In the beginning, it was the name that was with God. It was the name that God had. So all he did was to give it to Jesus. It is delegated name, delegated authority. And last time we said the name Jesus not only represents the person, but also represents an office. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says in John 14, 14, whatever you think you ask in my name, whatever thing you ask in my name, I will do it. In my name. Maybe in the coming weeks I will be teaching you how to pray in the name of Jesus. Because many of you have prayed through the name of Jesus. You have prayed through that name and sometimes nothing happens. Because it is not every time that you pray. You cannot pray through. You pray in. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible says. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. You need to understand what that in means. Because your prayers will change. Your prayers will change. Hallelujah. Now today I want to talk about what is in that name. What is in that name? Because you need to understand what is in that name. When you call something, when you call a name, and you can't understand what is in that name, you cannot be able to receive anything. That name carries so much. That name Jesus carries, it is not the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Proverbs 18 verse 10, the name of the Lord. Who is the Lord? Jesus. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The name of the Lord. So it is the name of the Lord. What is that name of the Lord? That name is Jesus. That is why I'm talking about Jesus. The name Jesus. Not the name of Jesus. Because when you say the name of Jesus, then you expect another name. It is like saying the name of this man. Or I say the name of Michael. That means I have to call him Okeo. Because he has another name. So today we are talking about that name Jesus. And I say this name is not the same name like the ones you find in Mexico. You'll go to Colombia and you'll find Jesus. Call that Jesus, they won't save you. Because it's not about a person being called Jesus that will change anything. 
It is not about how you call it. Because something that when you say Yeshua, Yamashiach, then there is power. There is power in that name. When you call it Yesu with understanding, because it is understanding and faith in that name that will change anything. When these disciples were confronted, when they healed a crippled man, they were asked, what name did you use? What power did you use? Acts chapter 3 verse 16. They were asked, what power did you use? What power did you use? Because that name and his name, through faith in his name. So you must operate faith in that name. And you cannot have faith in that name unless you understand what is in that name. Because everything in the kingdom of God works by faith. So and faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the word of God is a revealer of what is in that name. Hallelujah. Amen. And the more you understand, when I have an issue, if I'm struggling with any issue, if I see a sin trying to knock at the door, what I do, I know there is a name that is able to save me from every sin. Jesus, save me from this sin. Hallelujah. When you see your children committing some things, don't meet them. One girl came to me crying after service. She said, I have a problem. And she cried for such a long time. I thought she needed counseling, but she told me, my, my, my parent keeps on beating me because I keep on stealing. I asked her, do you steal? He said, yes. I have tried to stop, I can't stop. I find myself stealing. This was a bondage. It is like what Paul said, when I want to do good, I find myself doing bad. So I see another thing in my flesh, in my, in my spirit, in my body, warring against the spirit. Some of you want to do good, but you find yourself unable to do good. You say, I will never watch pornography again. I will never commit adultery again. I will never lie again. I will never do this and do that again. But you find yourself doing it. Unless you understand the name that you can run to. And it's able to save you. Let me tell you, there is no sin. There is no sin. No man can tell me that you cannot be. If only you understand what is in that name. So we pray. I told her I will pray for you. And I will pray through the name. I will pray in the name of Jesus. That she, he delivers you from the sin of stealing. Because it is not you. There is something beyond you that causes you to steal. And we pray the short prayer. In the name of Jesus, deliver this one from the spirit of stealing. I saw her a few weeks later and she was smiling. Hi, pastor. I was like, I, did you stop stealing? Imagine I don't steal anymore. And she was happy. Some of you, there are things you do. You, the only thing that you have never known is to run to that name. The Bible says that name, you run into it and yourself. You are saved from the spirit of lying. You are saved from pornography. You are saved from different things. You need to understand this name. Don't tell me that your kids cannot stop. If only you can go on your knees and call upon that name and say, Jesus, you are the one who was sent to save us from our sins. Save my children from this sin. I have tried to pray for this child in different ways. I have given sins, but it is a high time you understood how to pray in that name. Hallelujah. Say my in that name. What is in this name? Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. Matthew 28 verse 18. Matthew 28 verse 18. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew, the, and Jesus came. This is after resurrection, going to heaven. And the Bible says, and spoke unto them and said, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. All power, all power, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. All power. Can you say all power? All power. If you can only understand what is in the name of Jesus, in the name of, the Bible says all power. That means God, I want you to understand that God is powerful. God is absolutely, he is omnipotent, all powerful. But he gave Jesus all power in heaven and earth. That means inside that name, it carries all the power in heaven and earth. 
Now, if I, you, only you can be able to understand with your spirit what all power means. That means there is no power outside the name of Jesus. All power, if you're looking for power, it is in the name of Jesus. Jesus carries it all. Hallelujah. And so when you call unto that name with understanding, you are calling unto all power in heaven and earth to come and back you up. The reason why the name of Jesus is not working for many people, because you see Jesus as a man, as a child. Some of you still pray, Lord. You still see Jesus as a small child being Christmas. But the Bible says all power. You know, I was just thinking, Mary was told, you shall call him Jesus. So I'm trying to imagine every time Jesus, Mary would see Jesus running and he would call Jesus. Things would change. Instead of Jesus, when he calls on Jesus, because the Bible says he grew up in wisdom and stature through the suffering that he... So he was corrected as a child. But the most amazing thing, Mary must have been calling Jesus. And every time he calls Jesus, she finds something happening to her life. Because she was calling the name that carried all power in heaven and earth. So things would change. Jesus, come and eat. She looks around and wonders, where did this meat come from? That's why when Jesus, when Mary was in that wedding, she had already experienced the miracle of calling Jesus. Hallelujah. That's why he went and told whatever he tells you to do. Because I have called on this name. There are times I just call him from anywhere, from playing outside. Jesus, come into the house. And when I look at around in my house, things have changed. There was no firewood, now there is firewood. There is, was no meat, suddenly there is meat. And all I was calling, Jesus. Sometimes you probably say, Jesus, you eat in this house. Then suddenly food appears. That's why she had no issue. She went to Jesus, there is no wine here. Because there are times she must have called Jesus' name. And something happened in that house. But she understood what was in that name. Because that name was not given by her. It was given from on high. All power in heaven and earth has been given to me. This is Jesus was saying. Nobody has ever contended with that reality. That the name of Jesus carries power. Hallelujah. So when you call that name. What are you doing? If you look at the, the name power in the Bible. It is concretely. Do you know what a concrete is? If you look at this pillar, we can talk about this pillar being concrete. That means it will take something very, very powerful to bring this pillar down. It has to take a power that is so much to bring this thing down. So the name power, you can write down concretely magistrate. Look at that name, magistrate. That means when you go to a magistrate, what does a magistrate do? I sentence you to 50 years in prison. It is final. Final. If you cry there, as long as they have said, I have sentenced you. They, in fact, they don't wait. Police immediately hold you up and they take you to prison. In fact, they don't wait. Hey, 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 I set you free unless there is an appeal. And when we are talking about magistrate here, we are talking like the court of appeal, the highest court. Pastor talked about the court of heaven. So when you are calling on Jesus, you are calling on the highest court of heaven. That means whatever he decides with your life, it is so. Nobody can change your life. That is why concrete magistrate, that means the final appeal. If he says you will get that job, you'll get that job. If he says you will get married, you'll get married. That woman was saying here, they say, your mother can't help you to even have. But Jesus had already decided a scholarship will come. Nobody can stop it. If God has decided you will go to America and live there and own land, you will go. Can you say a good amen? amen? If God has decided that you will be rich, the magistrate has already signed it. The beautiful thing is that the word is forever settled in heaven. The Bible says the word of God is forever settled in heaven. Jesus is forever settled in heaven. He is sitting on the seats of judgment. All he says, that one, I passed it a long time ago. If it is written in the will, it is not going to change. It is done. All power in heaven and earth has been given to me. Concretely magistrate, 
superhuman. We are still looking at the definition of power. Superhuman. That means it surpasses human power. Yes, I have power. But everything, every power I have is delegated. What does he feel? Hallelujah. Superhuman potentates from the word potential. That means this, this, this power, it is not only concrete, it is not only magistrate, it is not only superhuman, it is potentate. That means it carries anything that can be called power. When you look at everything called power, it is all put in that place, in that name. So you can imagine when that name is released into a situation, it goes as a concrete, it goes as a magistrate, it goes as superhuman, it goes with all potential to destroy whatever it is releasing out. Hallelujah. Token of control. Token of control. So Jesus has been given all this. That power is locked up in that name. That power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When you call upon the name of Jesus, you're calling upon all the power in heaven and earth. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. The Bible says, Christ, the power of God, the wisdom of God. Amen. Christ, the power. So if you want to encounter the raw power of God, it is locked up in that name. And it is not just about calling Jesus. When I'm calling Jesus, that's why I'm calling it with an understanding. Because most of you use the name of Jesus like a magical potion. Something you wave. When you pray prayer, the way to qualify it or to make it feel nice. In the name of Jesus. Then you feel nice. Let me tell you, you can keep on praying in that name. But if you don't understand what is in that name, you will not receive. Because everything you receive from that name comes from faith in that name. That's why we saw in the book of Acts chapter 3 verse 16 that this name, through faith in that name. This name, through faith in that name. So you must have faith in the name. That name will not work for you until you understand what is in it. And then you have actually faith that it can work for you. Hallelujah! First Corinthians chapter 4 verse 20. The Bible talks about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not in war, but in power. Amen. The kingdom of God, many of us talk, talk, talk. You talk from Monday. Oh God, oh God. Let me tell you, power is when you come here and you say, I prayed in the name of Jesus. My cow that has not given birth for two years gave birth. What has you feel? Hallelujah. That is power. That is power. When they say electricity has power, it can keep on talking. I'm so powerful. But when we see light, then we know that's power at work. The kingdom of God is about power. And power has been given to us through the name of Jesus. We are supposed to be activating power. That's why Jesus told the disciples that these signs shall follow them that believe, that believe in this name. Not everybody. These signs shall follow them that believe. You can be a Christian, but you don't believe. Hallelujah. Mark 16, verse 17. That's why so many of us pray and nothing happens. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out divorce. They shall cast out. Let me tell you. You can use all English you can. But demons can be staring at you like this. I remember one time we went to pray for somebody who had demonic, was possessed by demons. We found, sorry to say, a servant of God has been there for about three hours calling on the name, Jesus, in the name of Jesus, come out, come out, come out, come out. Clear, and he put my sweat. And I'm not downsizing. I'm not downplaying his work. But I'm telling you, it takes an understanding of what is in that name. The Bible says that Demons tremble at that name. 
Demons tremble. When you mention that name, we understand. Now, let me tell you, some of you can come and say, I was sent by president. You just look at it. <laughs> president, you. Have you ever even gone near there? And then we know you are lying. One time we were at the university. We went somewhere and we caused trouble. Caused trouble. Our friend then, he was a friend. The CID director then, many years ago, now was a friend of his friends. <laughs> so now we felt like we are also connected with the CID through the friend of the friend. Amen. So when we were harassed, we were harassing a few, you know, you go places and you harass. Now we were feeling powerful because we we're saying, you know who? Do you know who we know? We are going to call so and so because it was some police officers we are telling. And they said, let's go to the police station. You call him. Now, when we realized that we were not connected to that name, we began now to organize our language. What does it mean? Unajua, unajua. I Of course, we were using lies. But we discovered this, not, this name, we don't even know it. We don't have even connection with that name. Many of us don't have a connection. We are born again, but we don't have a connection with that name. I remember before I got born again, I had a dream. That's what led me to salvation. I have been preached unto, but I had a dream. And in this dream, I remember, we were all standing outside the door. And there were body people, strong men who were wearing black. And they were pushing people through a certain door. And so, we were wondering what is happening in that door. And so, when I came to that place, I looked inside and I saw one person who had been ahead of me had been laid on the ground. His hands had been held by about... Two men, two men on this side, two men on the legs, and one. They were being slit. There were many other bodies that have been slit from the head. And so I discovered, oh, so I'm also going to be killed. Now, in that dream, I comforted myself and I said, I remember. I remember. There is a name that you can call that can come to your rescue. So the moment my time came, I was thrown in. And these guys put me on the ground. And one lifted up a knife up. And I said, Jesus! And the man looked at me. I called again, Jesus, in a dream. The man kept on smiling, looking at me, waiting for me to finish. At that time, I called, Jesus. And the man looked at me and says, he doesn't know you. He doesn't know you. And so he brought the knife down, and I woke up. And I was like, what was the meaning of that? What was the meaning of that? Some of you. Some of you, you keep on calling on a name that you don't even have a, a relationship with. From the day you got born again, you walked away from that name. That's why when you call on that name, sometimes you will not respond. Psalms chapter 1, Proverbs chapter 1 talks about, I called unto you all day long and you did not hear. I stretched out of my hand to you, you did not respond. Therefore, I will laugh at your calamity. I will laugh at it. That's what God says. I will laugh at your calamity. Let me tell you, you can call on that name when you don't have a relationship. It is not a, just a magical name that you can be misusing anywhere. One as you feel it. I'm very sure if that CID director was called and he said, there is a young man here called Kimani who is saying that, you know, he would have said, who is that? Because there was no relationship. There was no relationship. Hallelujah. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak in new tongues. Hallelujah. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Hallelujah. What as if you were? They shall take a poison and they shall not die. In this name, when you understand the power in the name, you have to have a relationship with this name. You have to yearn to know this name. One as if you were. Because when you get to know the name, you will get to know the person. Because the person and the name are one. They cannot be separated. One as if you were. Today we are talking about former president. So the name, the, the power he used to carry, he is no longer carrying. He can't order people around. He can't make laws. He's a former president. That means the name has been separated from him, the, the person. Yes, he has his respect as a former president, but he doesn't carry the same power as a president. 
But the name of Jesus can also be separated from the person. But as if you were. So when you call on the name of Jesus, the person is also available. Hallelujah. There is a man called David. He knew about the name. In the Old Testament, it was Yahweh. That is the name of the Lord. But in the New Testament, God gave a name. He said, this is the name. If you want to access me as Yahweh, come in this name. If you want to access me as Jireh, come in this name. If you want to access me as El Shaddai, come in this name. When you want anything from me as a father, if this name has not approved you, you will not get it. You will not get it. Not everybody here I can send in my name. Not everybody here. Even him, their presence, I cannot allow him to go in my name. Because he has, number one, to have my trust 100%. If he goes there, will he represent me? That is like Waigwa. Waigwa went in the name of another pastor. Then he landed there. He realized <laughs> he was not in sync. One as if you Hallelujah. Some of you can understand what the name carries. Some of you have been to the shed to the shop without money by your mothers. You land there, my mom. You are afraid, mommy. So you pay pesa. Where are you going? You are buying your mama. So and so, I'm a kutuma. I just need to know your name. That I just need to know. We are totally kubwa. I'm a kamau. I'm a kutuma. If I didn't know where my zima was cut, I'd be a party of mitan. Then the child goes there, wanting, how do I get this? Hello. And as she goes home, she begins to wonder, a name. Mama Kamau. Mama Kamau. So the question is, can you be trusted with that name? Can you be trusted with the name of Jesus? Because some of you, like Peter, who said, can we call fire from heaven and we consume all these people? Jesus said, you don't know the power you have in my name. A time is coming where you will carry the sword. But Peter, relax. This name can do wonders. But now I don't want you to misuse this name. That is why some believers cannot be entrusted with that name. Can't be entrusted with that name. Can't be drinking from morning to evening in a bar. Then Jesus entrusts you with that name. Fornicating from morning to evening. Then you are trusted with that name. The Bible says, my name is holy. My name is holy. That is why that name does not work for everybody. Because you must have the kind of... That's what the Bible says in Proverbs 18.10. The righteous run into it and they are saved. Not everybody. The righteous... The righteous. You are righteous by salvation, righteous by walking righteously and in holiness. Because so many people think that you can become, their places Mudaka may go and you cannot be served by my name. Because they will want to know, if I give you this, can you handle it? One as if you will. If Michael sends, for example, if he has a, a child, who is 12 years old, to go get a car, where he is known. They will look and say, this child cannot be given this car. So that is why you need to ask yourself, are you mature enough to handle that name? Because that name does not work for everybody. It works for those who believe in that name. It works for those who are righteous by salvation and by deeds. That's why the Bible says, I think in the book of Colossians or Ephesians, whatever you do in word or deed, do it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! Let us look at 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 40 to 51. 1 Samuel 17. There is a young man. He may have been young, but he knew about this name. The Bible says, and he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a script, and his sling was in the hand. He drew near to the Philistine, that is Goliath, verse 41, and the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. 
And when Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. He looked at David. Physically, David was a small guy. David was not a big man. He was soft-faced, baby-faced. Hallelujah. Because he was but a youth. I'm thinking about David and I'm thinking of Louis and Rudy. Hallelujah. Now if Rudy is coming to fight me, I'll be looking at him and telling Louis. <laughs> and a fair countenance. That means he was handsome. He had cheeks that look like he can be powdered. Bonus if you Fair countenance. That means you know, they are people who look handsome. And they look at harm. They cannot harm anything. Amen. So that is how David looked. And the Philistines said that to him, am I a dog? Because he was looking at David and saying, and th th thou comest to me with staves, sticks. And the Philistine cast at David by his God. Let me tell you the truth. Everybody who is not in Christ has a God behind them. Everybody. This guy knew the power of using the name of a God. So he did not cast him. Philistine was not coming by his own power. He was not, the Goliath was not fighting by his own power. It was not about his physical size. It was about the gods that were backing him. That is why he cast him by the gods. He was saying in the name of God, bah, God this, God this. Because they know the powers in the name of gods. And so David also said, and the Philistines said to David, come to me. And I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Hallelujah. This guy was cursing. He has already released the name of God. Then David said to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword. David understood something. That there is no God that is bigger than his Lord. Amen. Amen. Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord God of hosts. Jehovah Sabaoth. David was not alone. He was inside a name. He may have looked like he has nothing, but there is a name he was inside. He was dressed in a name. He was inside a strong tower. That's why the Bible says this name is a building. You need to understand about this name. It is a container that you can enter to. And the Bible says a strong tower. That the righteous run into and they are saved. So David was coming in the name. And he knew, I'm coming, number one, from a position of highness. Because it is a tower. Number two, this is a strong tower. I am safe. Everybody was looking at him and was wondering what is going to happen here. The field was quiet. But he said, I come to thee in the name of the Lord, God of hosts. The God of the armies of Israel. Whom thou hast defied. So, David was not coming alone. Many of your battles, the reason why you have not won them is because you have gone alone. You have gone alone. You use the name of Jesus as an emergency. When they have told you there is no job, then you begin to say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, you have to understand, you can't go to battle without a weapon. You don't call for weapons later. You carry the weapons. And number two, Every weapon for it to be effective, you must know how to use it. You can be given a gun and you are killed by a man with a stone. You can be given a hard grenade and you are beaten slaps. Because you don't know how to pull the pin. This name requires knowledge of how to use it. You don't just wake up in the morning and say, in the name of Jesus. When you finish your prayers and then you walk out. You have to know how to use because this name is a weapon. And every weapon requires mastery. Every weapon, every weapon requires mastery. You need to take a fast and tell God, Lord, reveal to me how to use this name. When this name is used, the Bible says it heals. When this name is used properly, it delivers. When this name is used, it is able to lift you. Because it's a strong tower. A tower is a tall building. Hallelujah. You need mastery. Most of you, you are praying for your businesses for seven days a week. I wish you can understand how to use the name of Jesus. Because when this name, you know how to use it as a weapon. Let me tell you, you will be getting victory after victory after victory. That is why the Bible says in Revelation 21. That he has many crowns. He has won many wars. So when he appears here, when you see the crowns. 
you realize every crown represents a battle he has won. So you are dealing with a God of who is a winner. You are dealing with the Lord who is a winner. So David continued. Verse 46. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you understanding something? Are you learning something? This day with my hand. So he's not talking about I will beat you. The Lord. Because he's in that name. So when he moves, the Lord moves with him. So who reaches Goliath first? It is not David. It is the Lord who he is in. So God says, my Lord who am inside will deliver you to me. Will deliver you to me. Because I'm inside this Lord. And I will smite you. And take thy head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the host of Philistines this day unto the falls of the air, and to the wildebeest of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in this one. This is a man who knew what he was doing. You know, some of us used to fight when we were in primary school. You talk. I can move the number. I'm killing you. Mimi, hey, me, I always in the Pigavita. There was one guy who wanted to fight with me, called Joshua. And you are doing a Vita to court like a mother. So I knew Joshua had been beaten before by a smaller guy called Richard. Richard was my tormentor. <laughs> we used to sit with him on the same table. Then he would draw a line. He says, this is mine, so I would always write on the edge like this. <laughs> if my book moved like this, wanted. I had so many wanted that I, most of the time I would stay in the class because Richard used to watch these Shaolin movies. When you go out, you go, yeah! Then I would be like, you know, you hand up a money that you have to in primary school. So Richard used to draw a line. Then one day when you were playing football, I don't know what happened. You know, when I always used to be the opposite team. So do you know I used to fear him so much that Anakuja, I, I allow him to change me. Like he, sometimes I make an effort like this. You know, and Nijaribu. So I one day did an effort like this and he fell. <laughs> and he woke up and he threw a punch. I pushed him. He fell down. I jumped on him. I don't know, the blows were raining. I was throwing blows from every side. And I was hearing people cheering me on because they had the hardest people. I finished like this, I was being pulled by a teacher. Because I wasn't even Ghana. I didn't know I was fighting. We apologized to each other. But when I went to that class, I drew a line also. <laughs> from now. From now. And that was class two for me. The entire of class two. Yeah, I was like, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going The torment ended. One as if you were. It ended. And some of you. May the Lord deliver you in Jesus' name. Now, when we had that in class three, a battle was arranged for me between me and Joshua. Now, Joshua was taller than me. Now, I knew Joshua had been beaten, had been beaten by Richard. But I had been beaten Richard. So I did the math and I knew if Richard had beaten this guy and I had beaten Richard, therefore, I'm okay. What as if you were. So I was given strategies. I went to the same Richard. Richard, tell me, how did you beat this guy? Can I be a Atakagi delay. Where we I have to say that I <laughs> this guy has no power. He'll go down. <laughs> so I was taken at the end of the field because we didn't want the teachers to know we were fighting. And it was done. So when the stones were brought, I said, <laughs> So Joshua came. He hit it. By the time he was looking, trying to come back, he was down. And I was in him. And I beat him. What as if you were. Now from that day, I was named First Body. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now this Jesus I'm talking about is First Body. He has never ever lost a battle. What as if you were. So, Psalm 17 verse 46, verse 7. I want to finalize. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saves not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's. When you understand the power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will never fight a battle. The reason why some of you are still defeated is because you fight your own battles. 
Yesterday, I'm giving a secret. Eh? So yesterday, Monaka wanted to move. Then he said, I want to call Austin. I want to call Brian. And I want to call. I suggested to him, actually, why don't you call these guys to help you? Then when he picked the phone, I told him, no, actually, don't tell them you are calling them. You are asking them. Tell them, Dad, I'm in Visa. You are in Come on, there's a idea. Now he was, I gave him a name. One as few. Now I could see. And Brian was like, I will come. The other one was like, I will come. One as few. Amen. I know they're his friends and they were willing. If actually before they are, I, before they were even concluding, before saying my name, they were already saying, we are coming. One as few. But I was just pushing a name. Hallelujah. For more influence. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Say my more influence. You know, the reason why some of your battles are complicated, and you see also, they understood something. That Mothaga may go with them. He has his pocket money. But when the father sends them, he will be sent with something extra. They will eat more. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know these teenagers, they love it. Amen. So there is power. And all these assemblies shall know that the Lord saved not with a sword, and a spear for the battle is the Lord's, and He will give you unto our hands. Verse 48. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted, ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. He was not running away. And David put his hand in the bag, took a stone, and slung it, and smote the Philistine in his forehead. That stone sank into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. That stone sank. That stone sank. There are only two tribes in the world that are known to know to throw stones very well. Jews and Luos. I'm telling you, a Luo can throw a stone and it will land where it is. We used to play in school. I'm telling you, Luos will always win. Because I remember one called Fanuel Ache. Oche. Fanuel and Kwanangani Amao is enough and enough. Step car to it. <laughs> you try that, eh? And you can see the way when they are they are playing football is the same. They will score directly. One as if you will. So Jews, I think they are related. They have a relationship with Lewis. One as if you will. But I have never seen a, a man, a Jew or a Luo who can throw a stone and tear a stone suit in the face. There must have been a power. There must have been a power. Say power. power. All power in heaven and earth is given. So when David released the stone, he released it backed up by the power that is in the name of Jesus. So it went like a bullet. It sank. Number one, this was a, a giant. So his bone density was heavy. Number two, for a stone to sink into the face of a man inside, that means there was another power that was backing that name. And that power is the power that was given to Jesus. That is why Psalms 18, verse 10, the Bible says, All nations compassed me about, but in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. But in the name of the Lord I will. David was not afraid of nations. Because he knew all power in heaven and earth has been given to Jesus. So there is no nation that has got power enough to destroy it. And Psalms 118 verse 10. Hallelujah. All nations compass me about. But. When you hear somebody say but. That means I'm not scared. You can't say my water on a kuja. But. But. I'm not even asking my army. I'm talking about the name that carries all power. But in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. Verse 11, the same thing. He's emphasizing, you guys, you don't know where my power comes from. Can you imagine all nations? All nations. One witch has stopped you from going up country. If only you knew the power in the name of the Lord to destroy. One person has harassed you in that organization. If only you knew the power in the name of the Lord to destroy. One woman has harassed your marriage. If only you knew 
the power that is the name of Jesus to destroy relationships that are not godly. One man has harassed your marriage too. Kabenter. Mwanaume mzima ambaye uko ndani ya Yesu Kristo, Kabenter, ambaye hakana jina la Yesu Kristo. If only you knew the power in the name to destroy. Hallelujah. Somebody comes and says you will not get that job. If only you knew the name of the Lord. They come past me. But that means do what? He looked at the north. He looked at the south. He looked at the west. He looked at the east. Not northwest. Not northeast. Not north, 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 west. You know, you have to have a compass. But let me tell you, David was like bats. In the name of the Lord, I will. Did you see we will? He said, I will. Because the moment I'm in this name, and because I know the name carries power, I will destroy them. Verse 12, he says, they come past around about me like bees. That means they were so close. Bees. They are quenched as the fire of thorns. That name has fire. Amen. May the name of the Lord consume everything that is harassing your life. Yeah. May the name of the Lord Jesus Christ consume everything that is compassing you about. Yeah. Anything that has bombarded your life, bombarded your marriage, may the Lord quench it out. May the fire in the name of the Lord burn everything that is harassing you. Yeah. Can you say a big amen? Yeah. Can you say a better amen? Yeah. Hallelujah! I will destroy them. And today, I want us to release the power that is in that name. Look at the situation. Some of you, if I was to ask you, are you financially comfortable? Many of you would say no. Why are you not rich? Yet this one who carries this name became poor that you might be rich. That means you can approach poverty in that name. And the power that is in that name can quench out poverty. Burn it completely. That you will never see poverty in your life again. You have been harassed by sickness day after day, year after year. The same sickness comes again and again. And you are still wondering, what do I do? Let me tell you, I, in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. Hallelujah. Look at Psalm 66 verse 7. Verse 3. Because to, to Psalm 66, say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. This God is a terrible God. You say terrorists. If there is a God who is a terror and can terrorize your enemy through the greatness of thy power, through the greatness of thy power, shall thy enemy submit themselves and journey through the greatness. There is so much power in God. And now that power he has given this to Jesus. And Jesus has given us a name. And that name carries on the power in heaven and earth. And the Bible says, through the greatness of your power, shall the enemies submit themselves unto you. Enemies look at your power, they say, we have no issue. We submit. We submit. Hallelujah. Verse 7. Because power is for making your enemies to submit. What is your enemy today? What is your enemy today? Your enemy could be sickness. You have a weapon to make that enemy to submit to you. Hallelujah. You have the enemy. He rules by his power forever. He rules by his power. God gives us power to rule. Deaths are ruling you instead of you ruling death. Lust is ruling you instead of you ruling lust. Lies are ruling you instead of you ruling lies. You are desperate when you have the power. All power in heaven and earth has been given to me. And then the next verse says, Go. So in other words, he's saying, I'm releasing you with this power. With this name, go. The disciples only had a name. They had a name. Read the book of Acts. It's all about a name. They would appear. We come in the name of Jesus. They were told, don't preach through this name. We forbid you. Because this name is causing chaos. When you preach this name, it's creating, it is, it is overthrowing our kingdoms. If only you go to that work with the name of Jesus. If only you would handle your family with the name of Jesus. I want you to rise up on our feet because we are praying. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Can you say Jesus? Jesus. 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 Give me permission to use your
your name. Jesus. Come on, say it like you mean it. Jesus. Jesus. Give me permission Jesus. to use your, use your name. Hallelujah. Because it takes permission. There are places I will go and I will ask my wife, can I mention your name? What shall I? That's why Moses refused to go. He said, what do I say when I go there? That time, he was called I am. That was the name that was going to use. He said, tell them I am has sent you. Because that name is known there. I am. Things change. So Moses had to be given permission to use that name. That's why I say, today, you're going to use that name. Amen. And you're going to say, Lord Jesus, release all the power that is in your name against this situation. Amen. There is a situation you're facing. You have tried to knock at doors to open. They have refused to open. Send that name. You have tried to get married. Something just stops it. Release that name. You have tried to get a job. But every time you try to get a job, you can't get a job. There is a name that when it goes over there, it will get whatever you need. You have tried to get healing. But every time there is so much chaos in your life, this name is able to deliver. You have tried to get customers for your work, but you struggle so much. Some of you are stagnated. You look right, left, and center, you can't move. But there is a name that can make a way. Bonus if you will. There is a name that I can make a way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Higher than other names. King of all kings, no other name like his. The name of Jesus, I another name. I no name, no other name like his. Amen. Amen. I want us to pray strategically. You're going to say, Lord Jesus, put, put. John 14, 14. They are doing the mention of using that name. You can talk to Jesus and you can talk to the Father. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. That means that Jesus says, I, you ask anything in my name. Is healing in his name? I'm asking you. Say a good yes. Is promotion in his name? Yes. Is marriage in his name? Yes. Is favor in his name? Yes. Is lifting in his name? Yes. Are jobs in his name? Yes. Let me tell you. If you ask anything that you can find in this book, you ask anything in my name, what you can find in this book, ask for it. Number two, you have to use that name. You have to use that name. It is like when I one over here. He says, if you ask anything in my name, that means you come to me and call me Wakili. Now I will do it. If you come and call me Owan, I will not do it for you. Are we understanding? So I want you to lift up your hands before God. And I want you to say, Jesus. Jesus. Come on, say it like you mean it. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Today, today, I come before you. I come before you. Asking you. Asking you. Through the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Release all your power. Release all your power. Against principalities. Against powers. powers. Against powers. the rulers of darkness. Against the spiritual forces of wickedness. Assigned against my life. Release the power. In your name. Against all evil spirits. Assigned against me. And against my family. 
In Jesus' name. Can you take a moment and say, Lord Jesus, release that power. Begin to release the power in the name of Jesus. Say, I release the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Against all principalities, against all powers. I release. Say, I release. I release. There is a power in that name. There is power in that name. Don't be too cute. Don't be too organized. Don't be too cute. Don't be too organized.